Greetings, dear friends! I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Ford Transit. Since the engine on the 6th generation Transit can be located both traversally and longitudinally, the gearboxes are from two families. The main transverse box is the BXT75 5-speed, used mainly on Transit and commercial vehicles on a light chassis. Longitudinal box is most often MT75, again 5-speed. The unit is of a very respectable age, it was installed on Taunus Sierra Scorpio. There is also the infrequently found MT-82 6-speed for a high-power transit with a 2.4 longitudinally displaced engine, which is no more familiar from the Land Rover Defender. By itself, MT-75 is considered conditionally eternal. Wear of couplings and synchronizers in the presence of oil, even with the runs over 500,000, can be minimal. In most cases, everything is also in order with the bearings, although there were cases when the hole began after 150,000 runs. The gearbox is let down by a not very successful gear selection mechanism. Since the heavy lever is on the gearbox itself, it transmits strong noise and vibrations to the passenger compartment. The later worsen its selectivity over time. Sometimes they use a cable drive from the 7th generations of transits after 2006. It is newer and has no vibration problems, but replacement is expensive and time-consuming. Paired with a longitudinal box is a propeller shaft and a rear axle. The shafts are far from eternal. These transits had problems with the hinges even during the warranty period, and you should definitely check the backlash when buying. The nominally maintenance-free rear axle is another transit duct headache. At low loads, it doesn't cause much trouble, but runs for 300,000 and walks on a highway at speeds of more than 130 km per hour quickly put it out of action, especially if the gaps in the main pair are already broken and the bearings are worn out. The transverse MCP also has a weak point in the shift mechanism. The drive here is cable vibrations are less, but there are other problems. So the cables are stretched and the mechanism begins to wedge at high runs. The former can be replaced and the later can be simply disassembled, cleaned and lubricated. But due to the peculiarities of the layout of the engine compartment, this process is again laborious and is performed only in the event of a complete failure. The clutch resource can be over one and a half hundred thousand kilometers, but an earlier replacement is often found, and then the owners criticize the design with might and main. Prices for original clutch repair kits are frankly wild. For a transverse VXT75, a basket with a disc cost 50,000 rubles. It's cute that there is a look for 8 SACHS for 16. By the way, there are at least five options for this for its execution. There is even a design with a dual mass flywheel for 2.0 motors. There is also a kit for the official conversions into single mass. In the catalogs, traditional confusion for Ford, it is difficult to find cross codes, replacements, and analogs. Clutch kits are incompatible with each other and release bearings. Services do not like Ford and their problems. Be prepared for this. The original clutch for longitudinal motors is more than half the price, a little less than 20,000 rubles. True, the non original is on average more expensive. But the flywheel is always dual mass, with the price of 50,000 rubles, and it can also be changed to a single mass flywheel from older models if desired. Theoretically, more than a dozen engine options were installed on the transit, but in practice, everything can be simplified to diesel engines 2.0 and 2.4 with a conventional electronic fuel injection pump Bosch VP30 VP44 before 2002 and with common rail system Bosch and Delphi after. Modifications with a 2.3 petrol engine and 3.2 turbo diesel are extremely rare. Many cars have already changed two or three motors because the chassis is more reliable than the engines, and when the mileage is 300 thousand, the cars are put on the run using the most cheap methods, the cheapest used units and a huge amount of collective farm. Of the common problems, we can mention the absence of a number of mass-market spare parts. For example, oil cooler gaskets separately from the assembled part itself or connectors on the pipes. The price of the cooling system hoses also bites, but the quality leaves much to be desired. If the hose serves only 120 150,000 km and its price is 10-15,000 rubles, then this is not the best offer. The situation is complicated by the fact that there is not enough non-original for some positions, and for some it is not at all. As a result, car owners are forced to use used spare parts of farm. Harnesses, rings, silicone, cylind and silicon pipes from CAMAS are used. Only enough, many solutions are more reliable than factory ones. Should we be surprised at the loss of Ford's popularity in the European market? Few even experienced servicemen know how these families of motors are actually designed. Thank you to the Ford marketers for the bright names for the public. Indexes can be difficult to find, but we did. 
So engines 2.0 before styling with a capacity of 75, 86, 100 forces, it is also dual torque DI with a conventional electronically controlled Bosch VP30 injection pump. Since this family consists of modifications of earlier engines, mechanical injection pumps from all diesels engines are used here with minimal collective priming. The meaning of this action is obvious. The VP30 is by no means a model of reliability. Over time, it begins to drive chips into the nozzles and return lines, and sometimes it pleases with breakdowns of the electrical pump, which is assembled on exclusively elements and on ceramic board. The pump is complicated and expensive to repair. The same can be said about the Delphi injectors, which are paired with the Bosch injection pump. Especially often, they try to replace the injection system on engines of 100 horses, where the injectors are more complicated, more expensive, and they need to be written into the electronic control unit. Even leaving out the bad power system, motors are, by commercial standards, not all that reliable. In practice, a double row timing chain is often stretched after 200,000, and by 250-300, the motor can start knocking. The later, as a rule, means either wear of the upper connecting rod head or run out of rockers and camshafts. Recovery isn't particularly difficult, but it's important to keep rockers and timing wedges out of the way. Many owners note that when using the relatively liquid 5W30 oils, the problem with wear of the beds and the top head is more pronounced than when using 5W40. But no less often the problem is attributed to the habit of driving on the moment, with a turnover of just over a thousand in any situation. Piston repairs rarely come before, either in the case of a very spaced run or after overheating, for example due to a broken pump or a leak in the heat exchanger gasket. The price of original pistons is such that one involuntarily wonders whether it is Alpina or Porsche that produces them. But no, a regular Motorcraft brand of Ford EOM parts will cost you 36,000 rubles for one piston. Fortunately, there is a Colden Schmidt for a 6 if you can't afford the original, but only in repair size. Well, or you can replace the entire motor for 600,000 if you suddenly decide to walk for everything. Engines of 2.4 liters until 2002 with a capacity of 115, 90, 90 differ from 2 liter ones in the working volume and the layout of the attachments. The fuel pump is different. VP44, but in operation it's particularly the same as the VP30. In general, the problems are the same but with additions. The pump here is very poorly executed and often leaks, and the motor is even more afraid of overheating. The upper head of the connecting rod knocks Hillary and Hother, and the connecting rod can also break off the lower head if there were overloads. After 2002, new motors with the marketing name Duratorque DDCI appeared on the transit as already mentioned. Mechanically, they are quite old, but the new intake and fuel equipment of Delphi Direct Injection has seriously changed the balance of power. Motors 2.0 with a power of 115-130 hp, FMPA and 7BA series, received an upgraded pump in one module with a power steering pump and an upgrade of the cooling system with two thermostats, as well as the new problematic belt tensioner for the drive of additional units. The turbine has become with variable geometry and in the last years of the model's release, an electric actuator also appeared instead of vacuum control. Motors 2.4 series JXFA, PHFC, H9FA, H9FB for 115, 135, 140 forces, as well as the earlier family, differ in design from 2.0 minimally. Modernization relative to the old 2.4 series in the same volume as motors 2.0 with common rail. Usually common rail systems are more reliable than simple injection pump with injectors, but the design of the first generation from Delphi received not the most successful fuel pump, very sensitive to pollution and even with a short circuit return before warming up. As a result, in the event of the sliced wear, its products not only contaminate the nozzles and settle in the tank and filters, but also massively enter the injection pump again, which causes a chain reaction of wear and almost instant failure after the primary problem. The injectors prescribed in the ECU in practice are not such a big problem if you install serviceable ones from similar batches. Moreover, now the injector codes can be entered even with free software with the cheapest OBD2 adapter. Moreover, you can even select codes on the basis to optimize the combustion process on injectors that were manufactured outside the factory. But the problems with the fuel systems are not limited to everything. Here, there is a very capricious EGR and an extremely dirty intake, and the turbine and piston group are much heavier loaded. Therefore, deservedly, new engines on the 6th transit are considered less reliable and successful than relatively old ones. 
On this information about the problems of port transit is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.